Okay, so the machine we have here is an International Harvester 1020 Titan. This tractor here is produced from 1915 to 1922. And this is instructions how to start it. So first, for an, just a basic overview. So right here, this is one of our two flywheels. This is where you put your starting crank to start the engine. You have a gasoline tank here, gasoline or kerosene. A water tank, which if you get up here and open it up, I'm draining the water out of this right now. But the water level should be up about halfway up this tank for it to work properly. Here we have the front axles. See, we have grease cups on all these parts. Same thing up here. Clutch forks, parts of the clutch. There's grease cups all around this. There's three on there. Oiler here, grease cup there, grease cup there. A couple on the governor up here. Our magneto. We have an oil port on the top and a grease cup at this far end. Come around to this side again. We have another grease cup right here and a grease cup right there at the steering knuckle again. Now we have the main flywheel on this side here. We have a grease cup right here. Another grease cup there, grease cup there. This here is our magneto impulse. We'll look at that a little bit later. We have our belt clutch right here. You pull that out or push it in to engage or disengage that pulley. And if you're not, if you're going to be using the tractor without a belt on it, you should keep that engaged or else that'll wear out. Up here we have our oiler. You fill it right there, there's sight glass on that side. This lever lifts up. You can pump that there. You have your fuel pump down here, and it'll also pump your oiler. Keep walking around the back side. We have a grease cup here on the rear axle. Walking up on the operator platform, we have a gear shift. If you go that way, and forward is reverse. And you come back here, you have low and high. This is your clutch lever. If you gauge or disengage that, if you pull back, you have a clutch brake. That's not a hand brake for stopping. That's just to stop the clutch pulley from rotating so you get it in gear. Over here, you have a foot brake. This is what you actually use for stopping the tractor. See right down there. And you have this lever that goes down. That'll be, a part that'll be your parking brake right there. There's the steering wheel right here. Rip it around controls up here we have a choke right there this is your ignition timing you set that somewhere right in the middle this is your mixer this is a 1920 tractor so we have a mixer instead of a carburetor if you have a 1921 or later you'll have a carburetor here so that'll look different this is a temperature mixing valve for if you're running uh, kerosene you're gonna want that on hot you go down here, this is your compression relief valve. In this case, this is open and that's closed. You have a crank for your oiler right here, a hand crank. There's another grease cup right down here for your gear shift levers. And we come a bit to this back wheel. And we have one final grease cup right there. There's actually, I'm, there's a couple I didn't point out. Right up here, the base of the mixer, this is your throttle. You have two there, and this is your throttle control right up there. So now to start this tractor, first thing you want to do, we're going to go turn in all these grease cups. In this case, this tractor just ran, so you're not going to have to do that. Then you'll need, you'll need fuel into your mixer, so you can either open, lift that top cap off there, pour gasoline in, or you can lift that up and pump this by hand. And you're just going to pump that till you can hear the fuel flowing back into the tank through the overflow. And you know you'll have enough fuel in there then. Just one other thing. Here's your magneto impulse. In this case, this is in the up position. You're going to want to push that lever. So that way this pawl will drop down. So, next to start this, again come over here. Check your grease cups are in. Check that your oiler there, 
has oil in it. It'll be hard to see on camera, but I filled that up yesterday, so there's oil in there. You can check the pressure relief is open. Your throttle, you're gonna want it screwed most of the way out like that, because that's fast throttle. Next, you get up here on the operator's platform. Check your neutral, clutch is out. You have your mixer needle valve here. Has a little, I can't tell if you see that, a little score marked on that. You can turn that a turn and a half open. The choke to be up in the on position. Your ignition timing, if you pull all the way back, that's cut off. You set it about a third of the way forward. And this helps if you have a little gas can like this. You can prime the fuel system. There's this little hole here. Pour fuel in. See, I have a little bit of a leak there, a gasket I need to change or something. Then you pour your get you pour fresh gasoline in that hole there. Then Everything up here is ready to go. Take your crank handle, bring this back here, It'll go on your flywheel and catch onto the key right there. You're gonna look up here on the magneto. You see the little tab in there? When it's in that position there, it's ready to fire this spark plug. You can grab your oiler, give that a few cranks. Just like so, you'd one look through there and check that you actually have oil dripping down all those holes. And you're going to run the tractor for a while. Look in your sight glass here. It's hard to see on camera, but there's oil, an oil level right there you can see it in it. And now the tractor's ready to start. So it'll be pretty loud once this tractor starts. So what you're going to want to do as soon as it starts, it'll fire. You reach up here. You push your choke down. You'll reach it right over top there. This is your compression relief. You can push it that way so it closes the valve. Push it that way. That's open. Your engine's going to speed up so you're going to screw your throttle in. And you're going to pull your ignition timing a little bit forward. Then once it starts, we're going to walk over to this side. We're going to make sure that this little lever is up and caught in that position. If it isn't, you're going to wear that impulse out really quickly if you lift it running like that. So, now I'll see if I prop my camera up here. The spot where you'll be able to even see anything. Just going to grab the crank. Okay, camera fell. You grab the crank. When you grab it, you don't grab the crank like this. You grab it with your thumb on the back side. Because if it sticks and your thumb's like that, it'll break your thumb. See if I can put this up where it won't fall down. A good chance this camera falls when this tractor starts. So grab the crank with both hands. And it's gonna roll, it'll roll back every time. Don't try catching it with the crank. That'll hurt. Okay, in this case, our impulse, it tripped. So you're going to want to go over here, and you do it from the other side too, you just push the lever down, and that piece will drop. In this case, I oiled that impulse so it'll trip automatically, and now it's a little bit uh, too sensitive. Again, it rolls back, you don't catch it right away with the crank. These tractors, they'll be a little bit sensitive when you're trying to start them. Right, to drive this tractor outside took me 15 minutes to get this started. Hopefully it'll go a little easier now. Again, the impulse trip. So I reach over, hit that lever. Okay, well, fired, but it didn't stay running. So I quickly open the compression relief back up. It's good practice when you're starting up or shutting down this tractor is open the compression relief before the engine comes to a stop because it'll reduce stress on your connecting rods and crankshaft.
right. I'll try shutting the choke, see if that helps things here at all. Oh, got yeah, gotta reset the impulse. So like I said, these tractors, they like to be a little bit stubborn. Sometimes they'll go right away. Other times they'll sit here for 10 minutes starting. So don't give up right away just because you couldn't get it to run for on the first try. Right, so I could hear the impulse clicking, so I know it didn't, I don't think it tripped. Okay, I've tried putting the choke back on. See if that'll help things at all here. We're actually gonna push the ignition timing ahead just a little bit more. All right, so we just pulled the tractor back into its parking spot here. See right where it's gonna stay for a little while now. So it's got a few issues I'll have to work on at a later time. Now that we have the tractor backed in here, the way you shut this tractor off, it's about the opposite way of starting it. You open the compression relief. I did, don't, oh, don't open the compression relief. I got the order mixed up a little bit. We do, if you want me back here at the operator's platform, turn your needle valve all the way in and let the engine start to run and it'll speed actually speed up as it loses gasoline. And then you as it's as it's slowing down, once it kind of stops firing, then you open your compression relief right there. And it'll run that the engine down and it'll stop. So then this is a 1020 Titan. And if you want to find out what year your tractor is, I don't have a chart at the moment. If I remember, I'll put it in the comment section of this video. But you look right back in there. And there's your serial number stamped into the side of the block. This one is TY um, 63488. 
Your later Titans are TY prefix, and the earlier ones are TV with a, a prefix. So, there's the, you can look up online just Titan 1020 serial number location. Uh, if you got a really early one, uh, not, not an early one, a nice original one, it'll be back here on the frame rail stenciled in your serial number but you see this tractor doesn't really have that on it anymore it's not that i can see so again this is the international harvester 1020 titan that's how you start it make sure you park it close your oiler off um that's how you start this thing how you run it drive it um uh, you probably couldn't hear, but this particular one likes it. It'll run rough at the start with a turn and a half open. So once it starts to warm up, you're going to want to turn that in a quarter or half a turn. And it'll take a little bit of experiment every a little bit of experimenting because every tractor is different. So hope you enjoyed it. You got a lot of antique tractors here. Probably have some starting instruction videos on them. So, if you liked it, subscribe, and other than that, everyone have a good day.